when you are bringing in people, you need to start thinking like, my current problem, if Ford is hiring people, they only focus on how can I increase the gasoline or maybe how can I increase the efficiency of like the materials, right? You need to completely start thinking outside the box. If you wanted to go exponentially, you need to start bringing people with those kind of like a thinking. We never know like how they are going to be changing your industry. Ramsey, thank you so much for joining me on the Let's Talk Business podcast. Hey, Manny. Great to be here. Likewise, I met you through our, your partner, Brandon. He's a phenomenal guy. We had him on the show. He spoke all about public speaking and the importance for leaders to speak, to be able to communicate properly. And this is a very important topic for leaders. And then he told me that, you know, if you like my conversation, you got to have Ramsey on the show because he is going to speak all about leadership. And for our listeners, they know that this topic is very near and dear to my heart because businesses are built by great leaders. You know, you could have not every idea is a business, not every business is an idea, but every business in order to be successful needs great leaders. So it's always important that we get the maximum from ourselves and ultimately from our teams in order to grow the, our own businesses. So for our listeners, give us a little bit of the background. I know you you started in the corporate world and now you're all about teaching leaders. Tell us a little bit about your backstory in order to set the stage for our conversation. Absolutely, Manny. I started my career in computer science, almost like I spent 20 plus years and working in the corporate America. And I was in a path to become C-level executive. And I realized a lot of people in the leadership roles are not really true to themselves. They are like wearing masks. They are like a person outside and person inside in the boardroom, completely like a different. And I started noticing like a why I'm thinking most of my time becoming them. And uh, the answer was very clear to me. I started like maybe investing more into my personal growth. And I found out coaching was my passion. And I started my coaching business about five years ago. Next month is my five month, five year anniversary. Oh, congrats. I'm, yeah, I'm super excited. And also this is one of the the key things based on research, 50% of the businesses will collapse in the first 12 months. And 80% of the businesses are completely like a shutdown in the first five years. And only like a 4% of the businesses are remind after 10 years. And the way I think is like my five years is coming up next month, but I'm thinking I'm just getting started. I'm not even completing my chapter one. I got like a lot of chapters to go. So it's all about like a true leadership, true personal, like maybe taking complete ownership of what is happening in one's life. That is where the leadership starts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I help people, business owners too, just take that. Be the CEO of your life first before you become the CEO of the business and run the organization. Yeah. So I want to dive deeper of what you said before, because you mentioned about 80% of businesses fail within the first five years. And regardless of you know, if the percentage is accurate or not, depending on the different research we do, but it's very close to those numbers. And the one thing I always share with people that are listening to my show, and they've probably heard it many times, which is that those companies were pretty successful, meaning to say they made a lot of money in the first five years. It's not like they were sitting there and nobody wanted to buy their product or they didn't have a good product. These are companies people don't realize had great ideas executed great ideas, started to build a company. They had people knocking down their doors. I need your product. I want to buy from you. And they still failed because they weren't set up for success, long-term success. And that's what we call scalability. And I think that's the essence, in my opinion, what leadership is all about because you could be a leader today. You could be a manager today, but a leader is for the tomorrows. It's for five years from now. How? Where do we want our company to be? What type of employees do we want to bring in as a culture? How do we want to think big, so to speak? But that's that's my version of it. And that's just how I see it. And since you do so much coaching on leadership, and I think you mentioned before, a very important thing is as leaders, we first have to understand we have to lead our lives and then we can lead our businesses. And I think it's such an important part. It's something at PTEX that I always share with my in own employees that if if we are in charge of helping grow other companies because from branding and marketing, we need to grow ourselves first, Mm. also as a company and also as people, because you cannot have the mindset of thinking, how could I help my company and my customer's company grow if you don't have a growth mindset yourself? And I think 
as leaders, we have to have a growth mindset on ourselves as well. Otherwise, how can we grow our team and our businesses? So it's a very important point. Talk us through a little bit of that process when you say, because I think there is a lot of confusion when a leader says, well, I focus on myself, I focus on my business, but then then you probably, some of the people that you coach and you start having those conversations and you see it's not that, you know, they're not focusing on their own uh, leadership. They're not focused on growing their teams and so on and so forth. So how do you define leadership? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think you fit really right on the, the manager versus the leader. Many people, they think that leadership is all about the title, the size of the office, and like maybe the the name tag that they got, MBA, PhD, or CEO, or CIO. No, leadership is all about like who you are being in the moment. And it can be designed and developed at any point in the life. You don't have to go to master's or you don't have to complete X, Y, Z to get into the leadership role. You can start becoming that leader right now, even though you're just like a programmer, you're just like maybe a designer, you're just an architect. You can show the leadership through your work, through your commitment, the way you are responding back to your customers, the way you're answering questions to your manager, the way you are thinking, the way you are taking care of your kids, the way you are walking the talk. Many people, many, they, they always talk. Their audio is super good. But in terms of their video, how they're acting is completely different, right? So just just example, like if somebody is like a preaching, hey, you need to get up at five o'clock and you need to eat clean, you need to do this exercise. And the person is like a 250 pounds overweight and that reflects every single thing. You're not like walking the talk the same way the leadership is all about. Like it's not about like many things. It's all about like how you are planning your day how you are planning this particular meeting, how you are showing up to this call. That is where the leadership. And many people think that I I act differently when my boss is in the call. I act differently when my, maybe the CEO is looking at me. It's no, it's what you are doing when no one is watching you. Mm -hmm. That is where the true leadership. Yeah, I I think this is so important. I hope our listeners paid attention to what you just said that leadership, as much as you could learn leadership and as much as you could be good at leadership, but it only goes this far. If you're able to showcase how you actually conduct business yourself and your team around you sees how you actually operate, that's the best training you could do for your team because that's not only talking the talk, but it's also walking the walk, so to speak. And I think it's a very important point. So let me ask you the follow-up question, which is, we see a lot of business owners, maybe there's a solo entrepreneur starting their business. And all of a sudden, they're hiring the first employee, the second employee, third employee. Could be they never had a leadership role in their life. They're not coming from corporate America. They started their fourth journey by having their own, you know, this side hustle and they became business and so on and so forth. Is leadership something you could actually learn to become a great leader? Absolutely. One thousand percent. So it's not about like a strategies or anything. Just start with asking yourself where you are in the map right now. I know you are in New York City. And if you know you are in New York City, if somebody is asking directions to go to Orlando, it's easier. If you don't know where you are, I can't give you directions. As a business owner, as a leader, just like maybe you're starting your organization, you need to understand where am I in the map? Am I in the elementary school, middle school, high school, or university? So you need to identify the phase where you are in because the strategies are going to be different. A lot of people, they hire business mentors, they go to business programs, but those strategies are useless unless you know where you are because the strategies will change and the, the results based on the strategies also change. And the second thing, uh, Mani, is, is, is all about who you are being inside is more important than what you are doing outside. You need to understand why I'm doing this one. Why in the first place I started this business? Many people, they have that clarity when they start the business. After getting into the business, after 12 months, 24 months, maybe after four years, they lost that purpose. They're doing something completely different than the reason that they started. They started because they're so passionate about it. If they look back and do the audit, 90% of the time, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're doing some paperwork. They're working on some logistics. They're working on all the the red tape there around the business versus their core things. 
So you need to identify why you started the business and am I doing this right now? The question that we need to be asking ourselves, am I doing why I started this business? If the answer is no, we can always go back to the core. We all have the core and we need to, our, our goal as a leader is to just operate from that core versus like maybe surrounding places. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, so let me ask you this because uh, this is a question that comes up a lot. So when, when you're speaking about financial goals, let's say in a business or you want to have a certain amount of leads, you know, you know where you are now. And as you mentioned before, and no way I want to go, I know the gap and I know, okay, I need to go from 100 leads to 200 leads. I have to go from 50 leads to 100 leads, whatever it is. Leadership, a lot of it is soft skills, is being mm -hmm. a great leader. I want to dive deeper if you if you don't mind, because, you know, this podcast is all about, no, you know, no nonsense advice and giving people Absolutely. the action. A lot of leaders, that's the challenge they have. I don't know where I am. I don't know if I'm in New York. <laughs> hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, if I would know I'm in New York and somebody's asking me for directions to go to um, Orlando, okay, I could do Google Maps. I could do my my location. But in soft skills, I don't know. I really don't know how far I am from where I need to go in order to understand my strategy. How do you coach people to really take inventory, so to speak, on where are they as leaders? 100%. A lot of people, that's the biggest mistake. They don't know where they are. So they can't even tell, describe the location and the path that, that they are in. So the very first thing, like I highly recommend, like maybe this is for all your listeners. You don't have to do it alone. You need to just like the, your responsibility is ask for help. And we do this really, really well for our kids. For example, if your kid's stuck in like maybe third grade and like having difficulty with one of the subjects, we put the kid into a certain program. We ask for like maybe one of the mentor, maybe a trainer to come and teach that. But when it comes to our own personal journey, we don't even think somebody else can help us. So having that awareness that somebody can help me, I don't have to do it alone is the first step. The moment you know that, okay, this is the problem, the person can come and show the torchlight, hey, it looks like you have some blind spots. Because if you're a, a dentist, you can't teeth, uh, clean your own teeth. You need to go to other dentists to clean it, right? The same way you're yeah. a business owner, you need to have that mentor or maybe a mastermind group. This is where the proximity comes. You are doing it alone versus you are surrounded with 10, 15 other people. Like you, I think like many, you're doing a pretty fantastic job of like a bringing all the people together through this podcast, you're helping them to see the blind spots. Right? The same way, if you sit next to 10 people, they're going to be finding out, okay, these are the things I'm thinking you're missing in this. And you need to just like acknowledge, you need to have that open cup mentality. And this is other problem. Many people think like, I know everything I, I can do. I read this, I heard it before. The question that is, it's not about you read it before, you heard it before. Are you implementing this? on a regular basis. Did you implement this morning? You know, looking at this audit, looking at this, did you do this morning? I think that is the question. It takes only five minutes and ask like, what are my key priorities right now? Why I'm doing this? Why I'm in this podcast? I wrote down like five minutes this morning because I wanted to just help other people and you are providing the platform to do that. That's my why. The same way if the business owner comes and spends five minutes in the morning, to write down why I'm doing this business, why I need leads today. What is the purpose behind those leads? What benefit that they're going to get if they say yes to this program or maybe an opportunity for the branding? How this is going to be impacting like maybe thousand more people? So you're not just doing it for getting a lead. You are connecting yourself with something really, really bigger purpose. And I will tell a simple story. This, this is also going to help like a lot of your listeners. So there used to be one construction company and the construction company appointed a a survey team to just like see how their employees are doing. And they went to a site and they asked like a couple of contractors who are working on the construction site. And the very first person there said that this is not a good place to work. This is really like not good working conditions. And the second person said, I'm hanging in there. I'm just like working here, just like I'm getting some leads, I'm putting some of these things. And they went to the third person and the third person said, I'm building a big cathedral. And this cathedral is going to be one of the best cathedral in the town. Three people getting paid exactly the same salary, $8 an hour, working on exactly the same project and the same location, three different views. 
right? Wow. So we need to have that like a bigger, why you are doing that? If somebody is looking only for the lead, they're only going to get lead. If somebody see the bigger picture, they're going to get the bigger picture. So one of the things, so let's go a little bit to the how, so to speak, to get it. So obviously there's a, there's strategy and then there's the mindset. So obviously what we're discussing now is mindset, correct? Mm -hmm. So in your case, mindset will always be first and strategy second. Explain what you mean by that. Absolutely. So mindset is the just, I would say, in a there are two types of communications. One, the communicate, whatever that we are communicating with the external world. And the second part is like a, what we are communicating to ourselves when nobody's around us. And in that internal communication, Manny, mindset is only like a one fourth of it. It's all about the information that you are consuming. Maybe you're reading some books, you're like being really positive, you're doing the journaling, all the things it comes under the mindset. That's only 25%, but there is more in that internal communication. And the second thing, this is like most important thing, is all about like your heart set, who you are at your heart, who you are being in that moment. What are the emotions that you're processing? Are you really like a grateful for this? So that's, that's the heart set. And the third part is coming into your health. Like, are you really healthy? Are you really like maybe in terms of like you're taking care of your sleep or you're taking care of like maybe quality of like maybe your life in, the, in, in terms of health? That is the third one. And the fourth one is all about your soul set, your contribution back, your character, who you are in that. So these are all the four things that are like an internal empire. So every single person that when they're thinking about mindset is just like a piece of it. And once we start like a digging into that, there are like a more. The second one, this I learned from one of my mentor, Robin Sharma, and he really, really talks high about all these four components. And if you miss one of those things, definitely there's going to be out of balance in every single thing. So let's speak about the leader that's actually focusing on growing themselves and becoming a better leader. Obviously, leading a team is hard. You know, there's a line that I've used many times on the show which is once upon a time, we were in the service business, the product business. Today, everybody's in the people business. It's all about the people and growing your people and really maximizing what they could bring value to the team as well. What are some practical advice of leaders really, you know, being able to bring together a team for the success of a company? Sure. So number one thing, this might be, a lot of people might have repeated this, don't bring people based on their current skills, based on their attitude. And I wanted to dig more on the problem solving skills, like how they are reacting to certain problems. You don't have to give them the problems based on the current industry because we never know. The current always like most of the, the people think that the current, whatever the problem that they have, that is exactly what they need. No, something outside. I'll give you a simple example. Look at uh, Ford. Ford Motor Company is like a hundred year old car company, which is like a valued at $50 billion. Whereas Uber, they own zero cars. They have like a zero manufacturing thing. It started in the transportation industry with nothing. And it's now $100 billion. And it started like maybe 10, 12 years ago, right? So I think like when you are bringing in people, you need to start thinking like my current problem, if Ford is hiring people, they only focus on how can I increase the, the gasoline, or maybe how can I increase the efficiency of like the materials, right? You need to completely start thinking outside the box. If you wanted to go exponentially, you need to start bringing people with those kind of like a thinking. We never know like how they are going to be changing your industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the step so, number one, yeah. Yeah, so let me ask you, because I think this is a, a very important point you're just making about thinking out of the box. I think it's, it's used very many times when you speak about creative people, let's think out of the box. Uh, at the end of the day, you are in the box. Uh, as mm -hmm. leaders, we are in the box. So you mentioned before about bringing in other people. What are some practical ways that a leader could challenge the status quo with knowing that they're not just saying I'm thinking out of the box, but they're actually thinking out of the box? Absolutely. The best, best way to do that, give yourself some space. Give yourself some distraction-free time. I call this thinking time. And a lot of, lot of successful CEOs in the world, they do this as well. You can go out somewhere where like maybe you are not going to be disturbed for the entire week. I'm part of like a multiple coaching programs for myself as well. One of my mentors, Dan Sullivan, 
he always talks about like your free time. Your free time is the most important time that you have. And that is where you get like a lot of ideas. You go somewhere, turn off your phone, let your family, family know that like you are not going to be uh, available for the next maybe two or three days and start thinking about what is possible for me based on like current circumstances. Just don't think about current circumstances like outside that what is possible for me. If I'm more courageous, Manny, what can I do? Maybe you can uh, start asking that question. If I'm more courageous, what can I do? If I'm more loving, what can I do for my team members? And uh, maybe write down the top 10, 20 people in your life and see how can I add more value? What should I do in order for them, for me to create more value for them? Maybe for your customers, for your maybe potential customers. So there are many ways. If you are sitting in the same environment where you are creating all the problems, you cannot solve the problems. We cannot read a label if you're sitting inside of the jar, right? You need to get out from the jar to see that. I call this like a drone view. Most of the times we sitting in the same floor and looking at it. No, you need to take a drone and get out from that maybe 100 feet high. You see the bigger picture. So that way you're going to find things. I like it, people listening to this. You cannot read the label if you're inside a jar. That's a good line. <laughs> And it's yeah. important and, and people sometimes don't realize, you know, sometimes they could be very smart people. They could even be mentoring other entrepreneurs or other leaders and great mentors. They know where there's times when they want to reach out to somebody to mentor them or to, to speak to them. Why? Because they're sometimes in the box and in order to think outside of the box, uh, you need to be able to be from the outside in order to say, what if we do it this way? You know, you know, all the reasons why you can't change. Or why all the different ways, if this is going to create a problem, if you do change. But sometimes somebody's thinking out of the back and says, you know, let's challenge the status quo. Let's do something different. And I think that's a great point. And the point that you made earlier, and I think it's so important that we're living in such a hustle, a life of hustle and grind in our businesses, and just the, the environment that we're all in, that we don't take the time to pause to say, okay, wait a minute, where am I? Let's start planning. Am I the best version of myself? Is my company in the best state of mind, so to speak? Am I people the, state, the, the right state of mind? And I think, you know, people listening to this, they can't take three days, at least take three hours, find the three hours to do it. And like you said, not in the same environment, figure out another way. Maybe it's a coffee shop, maybe it's a, just borrowing a friend's um, conference room for a few hours. You know, and in Ptex, we have a conference room and we've been you know, many, many business owners have been taking it and, you know, for a couple of hours, say, you know what, I want to meet with my team. And sometimes they have nicer conference room than ours. They just need Absolutely. a different setting. They need a different setting. And, and I think it's such an important point. I want to speak a little bit more alignment. I think leadership is all about alignment with your team because you cannot lead a team if you're not aligned. And just, uh, you know, on the way driving into the office, I listen a lot to podcasts and I listen to actually a a past trainer in the military and then hopefully we'll get him on the show so i'll not give away his name so he mentioned something so important and it's a theme whenever we've had different people from the military in the past and we know the strong strong leadership there and one of the things he said that i know if i don't have my people around me and we're clear with our vision and our mission there's no chance of success i have every single individual that's on my team regardless if they're on the front or in the back end or working from the offices or whatever it is, they have to be a very much aligned with exactly what we're going to accomplish. Leadership is the same way and business is the same way if, if there is an end result and a goal that you want to accomplish. A lot of times leaders are not 100% on the same page with, the, with their team. And sometimes the leaders are right, while others, the team might say, you know what, the leader's all over the place or it's not realistic, whatever it is. How do you, what's some good strategies of, of alignment between the leaders and their teams? 100%. I think alignment is key, whether for it's a business or life or anything that we are doing. Without that alignment, no matter how hard we work, we are not going to get the results. It's like maybe you're putting a lot of hours, but you don't see that. So the best way to do this with the team is having an open heart conversations. And asking feedback. Most of the times, like we are asking feedback from people who are above us, and we rarely ask people feedback who are below us. So it's like I think it's going to be really, really helpful. I learned this after reading a book from Sam Walton. He's the founder of Walmart. 
And sure. in his book, actually, like one of the lines I read was Sam Walton's wife mentioned that Sam spent more time on his competitor's business than his business. He's studying them, asking feedback, doing all those things and bringing those ideas and talking to the team members, people who are reporting to him and going them and say, hey, I'm thinking about this. What do you think about it? So it's always like a getting that feedback, having an open conversation and check out the ego. No matter who you are, check out that ego. Just like a, you are a human being having a human conversation with other human beings. If you are like aligned there, automatically they can feel that energy. They can feel that, okay, I really wanted to help my boss, my manager, my owner, my leader. Versus like, okay, it's an order. Order means like you're not putting, you're not aligned there. You're just doing it for the sake of putting a check mark. And uh, there are two ways anyone can do this money. One, asking the question, am I playing this game to win? Or am I playing this game not to lose? If you're playing Strong. the game not to lose, you are just like a showing up there. If you're playing the game to win, that means you are in alignment with your boss, your CEO, your leader. You are playing to win. You are part of that game. So we need to always like ask that question. It just reminds me, I, I remember I was uh, once sitting between partners in a team that they had misalignment and they asked me to come in to, to be there in the meeting. And one of the team members really was very outspoken and pointed out some weaknesses of the leader. And I, w I wanted to see how the leader will respond. And the words of the leader, I still remember when he said, this really hurts. I really am hurt, but I very much appreciate every word you said. Mm. And, I, and I found that it was so genuine. Like if he would brush away that, you know, you just told me stuff that I, I don't like hearing, and then only speak about, oh, of course, thank you so much. I love feedback. Then it would be misgenuine or vice versa. If they take it personal, then ultimately they're not accomplishing. And I thought it's really a act of leadership. A leader should say, you know, from a human perspective, from an emotional perspective, it really hurts. But for the business sake, I really appreciate you bringing it out because now I know where I need to change or perfect to work as a team together. And I think it's very important, as you mentioned, the human aspect of a leader. At the end of the day, we're all humans first. And we'll always continue to be humans regardless of our titles. And if you could bring the human element into the conversation in a way that people shouldn't be afraid to raise their opinion. If sitting in a room, you know, people should have, you know, if they have great ideas, they should have the, the microphone in order to be able to speak up and share what they feel. Or if they feel an idea won't work, wouldn't you want to hear it from them right mm. there and then versus putting in thousands of dollars and then all of a sudden you're hearing it from the marketplace months later, of course you want. So give them the platform and I think it's so important. So thank you for that. I, I want to ask you one last question, which is what are some practical rhythms that you teach leadership leaders in leadership in sense of in order to make sure you're constantly in check with your team? What are those, you know, of course, there's always people say, oh, I have one-on-one -on -one meetings and stuff like that. But is there a rhythm that you teach in order to gauge feedback on an ongoing basis to make sure that you're on the same page? Absolutely. So one common thing that I, I teach, like whether no matter where the leader is in the organization, the top level, mid level, or just getting started, having your own operating principles. I'll share a simple example, Manny. For example, you got on an elevator. And uh, you met maybe on billionaire and the billionaire is uh, planning to invest something into your business. And uh, billionaire asks a little bit about who you are and you share 10 things. These are the things that I am. And you got out from that elevator. Within like maybe the next floor, someone who is working in your organization got into that elevator. And if the billionaire asked the same person, you know money, he just got down from the elevator. And if, yeah, I know money, and if the billionaire asks the same question, like, who do you think money is? And whatever that person answers matches what you described about yourself, you are a great leader. So Powerful. you need to have those operating principles always with you. And it's not just like you're going to read it once a month to everyone. You need to showcase that in every single scenario, every single situation. So even whether you're not in the room, people will always remind, like say, oh, this is how money react. This is how money solves this problem. If money is like on vacation, no worry, I'll take care of it because I know how money, money operates here, right? 
So that's how you build it. You feed those seeds and that's how the leadership, that's the number one thing. I help everyone to create their operating principles. Once they have the operating principles, there will be all the responsibilities just going to execute that every single day, create that manifesto. Do the same at home too. You need to have same operating principles at home and help your family members to understand why you are doing what you are doing. The same at that team as well. Beautiful. What would be another example you would give on an ongoing basis inside your company? An ongoing basis, have bi-weekly, maybe monthly, maybe quarterly check-ins because we all need to go back and revisit that. Where am I in this map? And where am I heading? And what are the things that are stopping me to achieve this? You need to be very honest, open conversation. You need to always go back to the fundamentals. It's not about like a doing new things, going back and just making sure this is where I am right now. These are the areas in marketing, maybe in the sales, maybe on the revenue side, maybe on the operations. I may need to make the changes. And you come up with your priority list and share that with your team members. So that way, uh, they also agree with that. So that way, they're going to be supporting you versus like maybe questioning you why you are doing what you're doing. Do that like maybe on a monthly basis is the best thing. Very good. I'll just add because a lot of times we'll hear from leaders that they have these conversations, but what they forget is to prepare the, the other party that this conversation will happen. And what's going to happen is they want to check it off. They have my monthly meeting. All of a sudden, they send a quick chat or email. Hey, are you available at 12 o'clock? The other party doesn't even know what you plan to speak to them. And all of a sudden, it becomes a one-sided conversation. In our company at PTEX, we have those conversations. And a few days before, an email will go out that, you know, well, I'll probably reach out to you in the next few days for a meeting. Mm. And at the same time, in those few days, prepare yourself as well what you want to discuss. Like this, it's a two-sided conversation and could really add a lot of value to uh, the relationship, what they have between the two leaders and more importantly for the company as a whole. So if you're already having those meetings, make sure it's meaningful and make sure that not only you end up sharing everything you prepared, but you allow the other party to also prepare and ultimately share what they have to share for the success of the relationship in the company. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And make, make those meetings are more fun. I think that is where like all the magic is. Don't make it like, oh my God, one more meeting. But just make it more joyful. That yeah. meeting, they don't want to miss. Even though right. they, they prefer this meeting versus vacation. So make yeah. it like that. <laughs> yeah, that's a high bar to, to say, you know, let, let's think, let's brainstorm. How could we make this meeting better than vacation? <laughs> yeah, I think like we need to that's... understand like your team members, the strengths, what makes them really, really excited about few things. As a leader, I think that's your responsibility. Don't worry about like your uh, leads or numbers, or all other things, your responsibility. You need to know everything about your uh, team member your staff members. So that way they are the ones taking care of your business, not you. It's very cool. You know what? I'll throw out this challenge to our listeners. If you have an idea how to make a meeting more meaningful, more fun than a vacation, email it to podcast at podcast.pizzasgroup.com and I'll actually send you a free video access to the LTB library of videos of a great content just for taking the effort and responding to this. And I just thought about it, you know, because this is a challenge to put out there because we could all learn from it. Like, how could you make a meeting fun that the people really enjoy the meeting? So if you have an idea, send it to podcast at ptexgroup.com. We're looking forward to seeing what you're writing. Vamsi, how could people reach out to you or hear more about what you have to offer? Absolutely. LinkedIn is the best place. Vamsi Polymetla, you can, you can Google my name or go to LinkedIn. Or if you wanted to know more about uh, what I do, go to wamsi.coach. you find information about my products and uh, how I serve people. Beautiful. For the links and resources mentioned in this episode, check out the show notes at www.pizzasgroup.com slash podcast, where we'll link up to Vamsi's LinkedIn and website. Let's close with the four rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Number one, a book that changed your life. The monk who sold his Ferrari. Number two, a piece of advice you got that you never forget. Start before you're ready. Number three, anything you wish you could go back and do differently. Start my personal growth journey early in the, early in the age. Beautiful. Last and the final question, what's still on your bucket list to achieve? Travel every continent and uh, spend one month every year in a new, new country. Oh, wow. The rest of my life. That's a big bucket list. 
Yes. Ramzi, thank you so much for joining us. I know your time is valuable. That is why in the name of our listeners, we'll forever be grateful for sharing some of your time with us today. It's been a blast. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.